I made a machine that can kill anything and anyone. Hello there, Ray here. It started out by trying to harvest the explosive power of the Breeze's wind charge. And over the last four months, I have developed many tricks and machines using them. The Breeze is a new mob that spawns here in the Trial Chambers, which is a new structure for 1.21 that's hidden underground. The cool thing about wind charges is that they're not like ender crystals, where even though if you have a whole bunch of them and you explode them, they don't do any more damage than what a single one would do. Instead, they are like TNT minecarts, where just having one will do a little bit of damage, but having more will do a bigger area. Now, wind charges don't destroy blocks, but they can push entities. The wind charge item has 10% more pushing power than the one that comes from the breeze. But the breeze produces an unlimited number of theirs, whereas getting them as items is very slow and tedious if you've seen my video on how I farmed up the wind charge item automatically. To use all this explosive power, we had to control the wind charges. First by finding every single type of thing in the game that would actually slow down their momentum. Also pulling it backwards when it's trying to go forwards, we got it very close to sitting still. Doing this in combination with one of the slow blocks that we had earlier would stop it from moving in the X, Y, and Z axis. With the addition where breezes won't just attack players but also will attack iron golems, by having the iron golem nearby, the breeze will constantly try to hit it. But since the breeze only has to see the iron golem in order to try to attack it, it only needs its red line to see the iron golem's red line. Even though the wind charge that gets summoned from the breeze is actually much lower and would never be able to hit the iron golem because it would hit this glass block in front. The breeze is also inside of a minecart so it doesn't despawn and is perfectly held in by these two stairs. With the change to make breeze shoot more consistently, now we can use the previous wind charge that gets summoned from the breeze to determine when the next one will come. So as soon as it summons in a wind charge, we can read it with a skulk sensor as skulk sensor can detect almost every single thing in the game. So by programming this calibrated skulk sensor by using this lectern set to the page related to what is being summoned in, we can get the lectern to put out a very specific redstone signal which when put into the same side as this amethyst image will then only put out a pulse if it hears that type of thing within its range. And that's exactly what it does every time it puts off a pulse it powers this block here turning off this redstone torch which will turn off this repeater line. And then after a short delay it'll turn it back on which is perfect timing for the pit to push the wind charge which just got summoned inside of the breeze to get pushed over to the side. If we turn on hitboxes by pressing F3 plus B and slow down the game, we can actually see this in action. The breeze itself is going to summon in a wind charge. The wind charge is going to be spawned directly inside of it. The same moment we're actually pushing it with the piston, the game thinks it's still going forward, but then it will rubber band the wind charge back over to this location where it's really at. You can also see the moment that the wind charge itself produces the vibrations which go over to the skulk sensor and activate it. Despite it looking like the breeze is actually moving back and forth, you can see the actual hitbox of the breeze is staying in the center. We have the breeze sitting between two blocks so we can fit our piston in and also our slow block. And then the wind charge is moved when it's actually between both of them and this causes it to lose its momentum and get stacked over here on the side. So now that we have a bunch of wind charges, we need to actually use their power. So I went ahead and put in this yellow circuitry here. And what this does is it's going to align the breeze charges in two different directions. So pulling up the hitboxes, we can see that the breeze wind charges are all aligned up against this piston edge here. But there's a little bit of randomness when it comes to the side to side here, as well as the up and down. So first we're going to push them up with this piston here so that they're all on the same Y level. And then after a little bit of delay, we're gonna push them with this piston here, which will align them side to side so that they are all perfectly on top of each other. We also got a slime block here at the exact same time. It's also going to push them so they actually start moving as the normal pistons will just slide them, but they won't actually get any momentum. Then we just need the wind charges to hit up against some block and then they're gonna do their explosion. So just like this, I made a simple Elytra launcher that can send the player up thousands of blocks up into the air without needing tons of TNT or items. Now while we fall down back to earth, hit the like button and subscribe as it greatly helps me out. I use a pressure plate to activate it that way we can go ahead and easily not have the wind charges activate any buttons or levers and then if you just jump while it's going off then it'll push you way up in the air. But keep in mind that the wind charges from the breeze are different from the player item ones so you will take fall damage even if you land at the same height or higher than where you initially started. If anything changes to this machine I'll put it down in the description. 
besides launching the player super high and super fast, we can launch other things really fast, such as some projectiles like arrows, as the slower they go, the less damage they do, but on the flip side, the faster they go, the more damage they do. So Super Nate and I put in this white redstone component over here. This is going to automatically drop in an arrow. It's going to align it with two pistons. Then we're going to drop it at the same point. We're going to send the wind charges over on top of it and it will explode sending the arrow downwards. I also added in this green component here which is a clock that just counts and the number of items that you have in here will determine how many wind charges will pile up before the whole machine will activate and send something to its doom. So by adjusting this, we can adjust how much damage the arrow will do. So let's go ahead and kill this Ravager. It needs about 60 wind charges in order to kill it. And each wind charge is summoned in every one and a half seconds. Just like that, you can instant kill it. Iron Golems also have 100 health like the Ravager. And once again, we can kill it with ease. While the entire time the machine that can do this is really small. And the only thing it needs more of is arrows. To turn it off, just place in a block between the breeze and the iron golem, and then unload the chunks by either logging off or by flying out of render distance. And then when it's loaded again, the breeze won't see the golem and it won't start tacking again until you remove the block. And even a fully decked out netherite player with protection enchantments can easily be killed with only 40 wind charges, which makes it a great prank to play on your friends. It can even kill the Ender Dragon, here I have it in the End Dimension, right above the Exit End Portal where the Dragon will spawn in. And since the Dragon has twice as much health as the Iron Golem or the Ravager, we need more items in our counter, plus a little extra just because of the randomness. Unlike the previous designs where we actually come in and summon in the mob that we need to kill, Prior to the breeze filling up its breeze charges, this one we do the opposite. We first fill up the breeze charges by coming over here, resetting the clock, and then this is going to send all of them over here eventually. And then when they make it all over onto this side, then it's gonna reset and send the items back to the other side. And then when the items are all gone, this torch is going to turn on, which is going to send a redstone line back, keeping this piston in front of the breeze, which will make every single new wind charge it produces just hit in front of it and blow up. But we don't have to worry about it actually moving the wind charges, which are already stored and safely over here. This way the breeze doesn't produce thousands and thousands of wind charge and eventually crash your game with so many entities. Now the ender dragon can't be killed with a dispenser and an arrow, so I went ahead and removed it and we're going to have to put in our own arrow because the player arrow can actually damage it. So we just drop an arrow in here and then we're going to drop down and start up the dragon before the arrow despawns which is one minute. Then come down here place in your ender crystals down on the exit end portal and this will start up the dragon resummoning phase. It's going to go around and switch out the different ender crystal pillars and respawn in the ender crystals. Well it does this it actually also removes a bunch of blocks around this pillar here. Here. I fill this whole thing in with a big cube of glass. You can see it removed all the glass. So when it comes in here and removes one of the blocks, I have a cobble gen that can actually detect it. So when it comes to replace this ender crystal here on top of the obsidian pillar, it's going to remove this cobblestone that is inside of its cube where it clears out all the different blocks. This piston here is already being powered by some redstone so it's ready to push and it's constantly being updated with this observer clock here. So now that there is a block missing, we'll see the piston start pushing downwards. When the piston pushes, it's also going to be read by this observer which is going to send a pulse up this redstone line here. I use endstone here because endstone is a block that the ender dragon can't destroy even though it might destroy some of your redstone. You can always come in and put it back in again but at least you'll have the endstone to put it on top of. The redstone line is going to take it all the way over to our contraption. This way we can start sending the arrow and the wind charges towards the dragon before it's even spawned in. Otherwise the dragon would just move so quickly it'll move out of range of where the arrow is going to shoot it. Then we're going to drop the arrow and send the wind charges over and the wind charges are going to hit up against the block right above the arrow pushing the arrow downwards into the dragon and after a bunch of calculations we can see the dragon immediately get instant killed and also pushed really far up in the air and the dragon sometimes gets pushed so far up in the air that it doesn't even come down here to land as it normally would when it dies. Otherwise the dragon will swoop in down by the exit end portal, do its death animation, and then come in here and drop its XP's. And just like that you can one hit the ender dragon with no problem. 
I've done a whole bunch of other crazy stuff using the Ender Dragon and Ender Crystals, and I'll have that playlist linked down below. But there are things that have more health than the Ender Dragon, and that's what this next machine is for. I designed this one to one hit kill the Wither. Since the Wither has 200 health, we have three stacks of items in here. So before we send the wind charges and the arrow to the wither, we first need to summon it in. So after most items will leave the dropper here, it will automatically power these dispensers here. These are going to dispense the heads onto the soul sand here, which will automatically summon in the wither. It will be placed inside of this water here, so it can't blow up and destroy anything, at least with a short while. Then we automatically send the arrow down perfectly timed so as soon as it loses its shield against arrows we can hit it with the arrow and instantly kill it before it does any damage to the area all while being on hard difficulty i'm also quite the expert when it comes to withers and have done tons of different things using them and i'll have the playlist on all of that down in the description but there is one mob that has even more health than the wither and that is the warden and i actually put my warden farm directly inside of this insane machine I have this machine as well as the previous ones as schematics and world downloads which you can find in the description. Now summoning a warden is more difficult than the wither as you do need to make sure that you have a real skulk shrieker here that is generated down in the deep dark. And if you've seen anybody use my warden farm you'll know that this arrow here is going to summon in the warden without even needing the player. But most of the time the arrow is not on top of the shrieker so we're not summoning in wardens. That's because the machine itself takes a while to charge up enough wind charges to kill a warden. Since the warden has 500 health we need a total of 5 stacks of items in here. Or 5 stacks worth of wind charges in order to get enough momentum on the arrow to kill the warden which will be placed into here. So once all the items are sent over here the machine automatically resets it by sending all the items back. And then after the items get to a certain amount, we're going to summon in the Warden, as it takes a little while to get summoned in. The way this is going to be done is we have some redstone here, which is automatically keeping this arrow going up and down. That way it doesn't despawn. And then when it's time to summon in the Warden, we're going to connect this block here so that the same power which activates these pistons will send a pulse around here. One piston will push the arrow back onto the Shrieker, and then I'll let it bounce up and down. And then the piston is going to push it back over onto this side so we only get one warden summon as we can only kill one at a time. So the pulse comes through, moves the arrow over, then moves it back. We get one shriek. This is going to make the warden get summoned on top of our spawning platform here. And then we're going to have the water push it towards the center, push it down this hole here where it's going to come over here just in time to send all the wind charges over and smuck it with the super fast arrow and one shot the warden the strongest mob in the game see more crazy tricks and glitches i discovered over the 15 years of playing this game with this playlist here if you enjoyed the massive time i put into this game consider supporting me on patreon this not only lets me continue doing what i love but i also offer some cool perks otherwise you can always share this video with your favorite minecrafters and i will see you in the next one Bye bye